Why do you teach your students three different types of story structure? So you have the hero's journey, the three-act structure, and then something that was new to me, which is the Jewel Selbo's 11-step model. Yeah. So, you know, there are all these different story structure models out there in the world. And, you know, they just have different terms, but they're all basically kind of the same approach to story structure. Um, so, and every writer has a different process and a way of thinking about story. So I think it's really good to expose yourself as a writer to all the different models and see, okay, which one helps me? You know, and I think the important thing to remember is it's their forms, not formulas. It's not something you should follow like paint by number, like here's page 30, this is where the turning point, mid six, midpoint is on page 60, you know, like, like I really use these um, story models as inspiration rather than, you know, some sort of set of rules that I have to follow. Um, and so I like to give my writers different tools to put in their toolbox and then to use the ones that are helpful to them. And there are, um, there are three that I really like and there's others too that are really amazing, but I just find it, you know, I don't want to give people too many things, which just makes them crazy and confused, including myself, by the way. So um, I like the hero's journey, which we've already talked about. Um, and I use that, which is, you know, the ordinary world, the call to adventure, the refusal to the call out of fear, meeting the mentors, crossing the threshold, blah, blah, blah. Um, so so for those those people that are really interested in psychological storytelling and emotional journeys, I think that's that's the number one one. And, you know, that story model is fascinating because um, Joseph Campbell, who actually identified that pattern of storytelling, you know, he studied myths and fairy tales across all different kinds of cultures and across all recorded history. And it's the same pattern. So it, it, and he sort of likens characters in these myths and fairy tales to those that Carl Jung found in our unconscious brain. And it's like, I think the reason this story model is so powerful is it comes from our human brain. Our need to have a story told in a certain way where we're processing our own fears and our own struggles, you know? Um, so I, I love that story model. Um, it helps me a lot. Again, not a formula, it's a form. You can move those and shift those phases around, you know, or, draw, or not have a phase, you know, it's up to you to use it creatively. Um, and you can see that pattern in Hollywood movies. You can also see it in um, um, more independent, character-driven, slightly experimental films. You can find traces of it. So it just depends how much you want to embrace that in your, in your structure. Um, and then I also talk a little bit about three-act structure, which is kind of the way everybody talks about story structure. You know, um, ordinary world, inciting incident. Act one turning point, you know, um, midpoint, end of act two where the everything falls apart. And then I'm going to try one more time and then climax and then resolution. Um, and that's just a really simple way to think of feature writing, which is mostly what I focus on with writers. Um, so there's that model. Um, and then there's the Jewel Selbo model. And I'm going to get my cheat my cheat. Oh, please do. Here. Yeah, yeah. This um, was new to me. Mm -hmm. But I, Jewel Selbo wrote a book. I can't remember the name of it, but it's um, it's J-U-L-E-S-E-L-B-O, S-E-L-B-O. And she is wonderful. And this, this way of telling feature um, stories is so simple and so clear. And I just find it really helpful. So I'll share that with you. Um, and again, you know, if, if you find that this is like working for you and you really um, are attracted to it, like get her book because it explains it in much more detail. Um, but she basically says there are 11 steps in a feature film. The first step is the character's overall want and why. So you establish through action what they want and why they want it. And then the character logically goes for it. So they take action to try to get that thing that they want. But... The character is somehow denied. Okay, they they that's not going to work. They can't they can't get it that way. Um, but the character gets a second opportunity to um, achieve their overall want. But there's danger around that second opportunity. Like it's kind of a shady way. Maybe it's not on the up and up. But there's some danger around it, either emotionally or physically. Okay. But they want it so badly at the end of Act One, they go for it. They decide to go for it. 
again, you'll these these forms are the same. Like they they're just different language around the same turning points and stuff. But at the end of of Act One, the character decides to go for it, and now we're in Act Two, right? And so. Um, all goes well. They're going for it. Look, look, they're getting what they want. Oh my God. But something happens in the middle of the script. And one thing I would love to share with your um, viewers is this idea of the midpoint. You know, um, sometimes the midpoint, people think of it as like something happens out of the blue that, that, causes everything to fall apart or it's like a false victory and then they have to deal with it's false or whatever. But I always think the best midpoints are a moment where the character just like, everything's going okay, they're getting what they want, but then they get to that cave and it's like they're in that cave and their fear is around them and they make a decision out of fear that causes everything to fall apart for them. They go back to their old pattern and that actively gives them, like they drive that midpoint and, and causes everything to fall apart, which in Jules' 11-step um, um, structure is called All Falls Apart. <laughs> right? So all falls apart, looks like they're going to fail. Um, and then at the end of act two, there's a crisis where they, again, they have to make a decision or a commitment. Um, do they go for a new strategy? Do they give up? You know, what do they do? Usually they decide to try again. And that decision or that crisis decision drives them into act three. Um, and then we have this climax where it's the final attempt to get what they want. And Again, usually we have a transformation, right? They do something they never could have done back in act one. They get what they want. And then the last phase she calls truth, the truth comes out to make things right. And this is where um, that the character discovers something new about her world. She has some new insight about herself. Um, and that usually has the power to heal whatever was broken back at the beginning of the story. Um, and so what I love about this, this story model is that it's really goal driven, you know, it's like they want something, they decide to go for it, they get blocked, they get a second opportunity, I'm afraid, I want it so much I'm going to go for it. It's just, it allows you to really find that goal for your character and let them pursue that in the story. That's awesome. And who yeah. was Jewel Selbo? Jewel Selbo is an incredible writer. I can't say enough great things about her. She's a friend. She's a wonderful woman. She's a super talented writer. Um, I met her as just a, a colleague, uh, as a writer and a person who worked with screenwriting students. Um, she's written a bunch of different movies. She did a lot of animation. She's um, writing novels now. Um, she just wrote a new kind of like detective novel that just came out. Um, and she's phenomenal. And I think she's still teaching. But um, she really just looked at all this material out there and she said, I'm going to make up my own version of this that's really simple. It's really character and goal driven. Um, and I've used that 11 step story structure a lot in my own work and with clients. Now you have a film that you wrote and directed that starred Alicia Silverstone. Yes. And it's a true crime. It's called true crime. Okay. Yes. Please don't watch it. It's not very good. Oh no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. I would love to tell my true crime story. If um, people don't. are interested, mm -hmm. if any, if any of your viewers are interested in being filmmakers, um, in addition to being writers, you know, like wanting to make your own films, um, because I actually started out and I wanted to be a director and I went to UCLA film school. I was in the directing program there. I got my MFA there and I was, um, positive that that's what I wanted to do until I directed a movie called True Crime. <laughs> and I just found um, it, was, it was a great experience. Like I learned so much, but I also realized I'm not a director. Like I don't enjoy being kind of the focus of everybody's questions and lots of stress and all that stuff. I really realized like, oh my gosh, I had such a great time writing the script. Like I'm the, I'm the writer, I'm not the director. Um, but it was it was a great experience. And what it taught me as a writer is because because I was directing it too, and it was pretty low budget. You know, at the time we had like eighteen days to shoot it. So it was kind of crazy. Um, what i what I found is, and I wish I had known this before I actually directed it, is how important it is if you're actually making your own scripts, like you're and you're kind of doing it DIY. I mean, I had a studio that it, I think the budget was one point two million dollars, which at the time was it was a decent low budget movie. Um, but what I wish I had known, and I wish I had listened to people who told me, is you know, make it contained. Don't have a lot of different locations. 
really boil your script down to only the scenes that you absolutely need to tell your story. Because what ended up happening is that we would have company moves and I just, I every day I lost scenes where the producers were just like, we can't shoot that scene because we don't have enough time. And so it was just very frustrating to, to watch my story. You know, eventually it kind of makes sense. You know, in the editing room, we had to kind of rewrite the movie to, to fix all the things that we couldn't sh shoot. Um, but, and it kind of worked out. But um, what was great about it is I learned I didn't want to be a director. I really learned that I am a writer through and through. I like being alone. Yes, I like being with other people in a room too, but I do not like being on a set and being in charge of a bunch of people. It was just extremely uncomfortable for me. <laughs> sure. I mean, sometimes the idea of something sounds wonderful and the title of it, and then once you actually get into doing it, then oh, you realize yeah. that, okay, this isn't for me. This but This isn't for me. I'm going to yeah, get through sense. this. You know, and I had done it in film school. I had directed several films, which I loved doing, but it was on a much smaller scale. It was just my friends and I making a movie, and it was great. But when it became this big thing, I just realized, you know, I don't have the temperament to really um, deal with all this stress, you know? Sure. Sure. Now, yeah. um, what prompted you to write the story? The um, that Pop? story. Oh, mm -hmm. that was that, that. This is actually might be really interesting um, for your viewers. Um, I got out of film school, and I, you know, I said I was in the directing program, so I had a couple short films that I had made. But my agent said, "You need to write something. You need to write a feature." And I was like, "Okay, um, what should I write about? I have no idea." And I remembered back to something that happened to me when I was a little girl. Um, when I was like nine or 10 years old, I was at my grandparents' house and I was, I don't know, I was looking for something and I went into my grandfather's closet and I found this stack of true detective magazines, which back in the day were like, you know, the way we have true crime now, it's all over television. Well, back in the day, it was kind of this secret thing and there were these magazines, right? And um, I was like, oh, what are these magazines? You know, I'm like a 10 year old. Oh, and I opened them up and it's like literally photos of like dead bodies with like black strips over their eyes. And I was just like, ah, what is this? And then I was reading and they described like how the person got murdered and how the detectives, you know, went after them and figured out who had committed the crime and everything. And part of me was like this whole ugly world of like the real world was opened up to me. But I also was like, this is cool. Like detective stuff. Like I like this, you know, but my grandfather was like, Patty. And I was like, oh. Put it in a way, pretend like I never saw it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm innocent. Um, but I also, you know, it, it really ignited in me this interest in true crime, which I still have. Um, but as I was thinking of, you know, what do I want to write? I was like, oh, maybe I could write about like that thing of finding those magazines. So I ended up fictionalizing it. And I just made it about a high school girl who's obsessed with true crime magazines. And um, a girl at her high school gets murdered and she decides she's gonna find out who the killer was. So it's kind of like a Nancy Drew kind of, right. you know, beast, B-level movie about this girl who wants to find the killer. And it's kind of a coming of age story really. Um, but it came from my own experience, you know, and, and a lot of the stuff that I write, it, it, it may not be technically, literally what happened to me, but there's always something in there that did happen to me. You know, and so I think when you're looking for a story, you always want to have that personal connection somehow, because that's kind of where the juice is for you as a writer. You know, especially if you're scared to write it, that's a good thing. Well, the million dollar question is, what yeah. was the theme Ooh, of True Crime? Oh, the theme. I think the theme ended up being, be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. Interest. You know, um, you think you know the way the world works, little girl. You have no idea. You mm. know, so it's kind of dark. It was kind of a dark theme. Sure. sure. Yeah. 